Hello everyone, welcome back to another tutorial. In this one, I'm going to show you guys how to make a river with dynamic flows. This is a very flexible material, although it is pretty expensive, so uh, it's just something to keep in mind. Don't use it unless you really, really want the effect. So here we go, here's kind of like what it looks like in motion. Also, I have the characters set up to displace the water. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go over, oops, I'm going to go over some of the technical limitations and so you guys can um, basically have a better understanding of where this effect can be used and where it shouldn't be used. The first thing I will mention is uh, skeletal meshes are not compatible with mesh, distan mesh distance fields, which is what this effect is driven off of. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you go to Edit, Project Settings, uh, Rendering, make sure your Generate Mesh Distance Fields is enabled. And it has to be enabled, otherwise this effect won't work. The main issue with this effect is skeletal meshes don't generate distance fields. So as a workaround what I did was I actually brought in a cylinder that I made in 3ds Max. Uh, I tossed it in the character blueprint, placed it where the effect kind of looked best, and I just applied a material that made it in so it, did, it doesn't render at runtime. So I can just go to wireframe you can see that the cylinder does in fact exist I have it uh, character blocking named character blocking volume over here all right so back over here just to show you again it does in fact displace the other technical limitation here is this does not work, this effect does not work well with extremely small objects and extremely large objects. And the reason for this being is because mesh, dis mesh distance fields scale directly with the object. It doesn't actually hold uh, like, a, uh, like a specific size when you're scaling. It, it would basically be nice to be able to set some sort of distance factor or something to each mesh and so you can you can control this effect better as of right now what happens is when you go to visualize and enable the mesh distance fields you can see them you can see how far they affect and when you scale it really far down it simply doesn't have enough data to warp the textures in a realistic way it just stretches them in a very short distance, and you kind of saw that with the character. The other thing that doesn't work is when you scale it really large. So if I just keep on scaling it up, you can kind of see the bounds of the mesh distance fields, and you can see how it extends so far out that the distortion no longer looks realistic. And so that's the major limitations that we're dealing with with this technology. So it'd be really nice if, like say I scaled this way up, if I could come over here and be like, oh, well, I want the mesh distance fields to be significantly smaller on this. That'd be a really nice feature to have in case uh, anyone at Epic is, ends up watching this. So with that out of the way, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is, well, I'll show you guys one less technical thing, then I'll get into the material. The last technical thing is something that, if any of you have made rivers, you should already know about this, but just in case you haven't, I'll touch on it briefly. When making a, a river that isn't straight, you want to UV it in a way that it's still straight. That way the textures flow with the mesh. It's simple, most people probably already know about it, but I figured I'd touch on it briefly just in case anyone doesn't know about that. 
if you basically unwrap it according to the way it is, it'll just textures will just pan straight across. But if you texture it to the zero to one space, it will flow along. And it doesn't have to be filling the zero to one space completely. It just has to be um, straight. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the material now. The material is actually rather simple. As you can see, it's like pretty, uh, pretty basic. The key elements for this effect are just this right here. And that's mainly what I'm going to be digging into. The rest of this is pretty, uh, pretty basic stuff. I'll show you guys that as well. But really what's happening here in the effect is right here. The first node I added was the distance field gradient. As far as I know, that is actually a relatively new addition, either 413, I think it's 413, maybe 412. So that's pretty new. And what I'm doing here is I'm just uh, taking a distance field gradient, which references the distance fields, and then I'm normalizing it and multiplying it by three. This is one of the nodes that will affect the overall look of the material. Although this is not one that you really want to mess with. This is something that changes pretty much everything. Um, realistically, it would be better to change some of the ones down the line unless you need to change the material on a whole. And at this point, what I'm doing, first I'm going to talk about the how I got the height to do what it's doing. And so what I'm uh, what I'm basically plugging this into is after the multiply, I'm masking out all the channels except for the alpha channel. And then I'm desaturating that just to make sure there's no color information there. And uh, this is the displacement factor that I have right here. And this plugs straight into the world displacement. So basically, if I were to change that multiply node, the displacements that's happening here would just raise or lower based on that number. Pretty pretty simple uh, right there. And just while I'm here, I'll touch on what's happening over here. Um, basically, this is just a basic refraction index tessellation multiplier. Um, this is just a depth fade to fade away from the rocks. And this is actually just defining two different material setups here for the for the water. Getting back onto point, I'm taking this multiply and I'm actually driving that up through a mask and I'm just masking out the red and green channels and plugging that straight into a constant bias scale. This is the node that's going to change the effect the most dramatically. Um, you can change the bias and the scale. Both do some pretty wild things to the material. Uh, in order, depending on the scale of your scene, you're going to have to mess around with these options a lot. Uh, at least that's what I had to do. So be prepared for it to not work initially and then have to go in and mess around with these until you get it right because it, it, it's a bit of a pain. At that point, I multiplied it by 0.1. This is another node that you might want to change. Uh, I typically leave this at 0.1 because changing this at all tends to do some pretty extreme things. Well, while changing the constant bias scale tends to have more of a subtle effect. I then again multiplied this by 0.5 and I dro drove that into a 1 minus. And then I'm just adding that to a texture coordinate node, and this just changes how um, how your material tiles and affects the textures that you're driving this these nodes into. At this point, past this add is just simple stuff like a, a panner uh, for for the different textures that I've added. And the last thing I'll mention is my basic material settings that I have set up over here. I have the blend mode set to translucent, and I have translucency set to 
screen space reflections, and surface translucency volume. As you've probably seen already, the instruction count is extremely high, and if I come back over, the material is pretty complex. So let's see, shader, shader complexity. Yeah, you can see here the material is, it's not, it's not in the white, but it is in the red. So it's, it's pretty bad in terms of complexity. However, what you can do to help reduce the instruction count is this is very expensive. You can always change it to volumetric non-directional turn off speed and screen space reflections. And that's going to reduce it a lot. Even leaving screen space reflections on is going to um, bring it down by at least half the instruction count. So yeah, we're down to 258. And coming back over, it really doesn't look that different. At least with my material setup. So yeah, with yours it may be different, but with mine, the sacrifice is more than acceptable. And with that, I believe we have covered all the topics that I need to cover in order for you all to have a better understanding of how mesh distance fields work with uh, material displacements. And I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.